Uh, what's up, everybody? Duvdev. Erez. And we're Infected Mushroom, and, and we're, we're using, using Cubase. Cubase. What a timing. You don't Ooh. need to do the automation thing in Cubase. That we, yeah. uh, what is it called? Audio matching. Yeah. Uh, We've been cu using Cubase for the last 20 years, I think, from version 1 or 2. Uh, and this is Cubase 11, the latest version. And uh, again, this is where we make music. It helps us do music. I don't see myself making music in any other program because uh, I just feel at home over here. And uh, it's part of the process for us to make music. Um, and um, I'm waiting for the next Cubase. Yeah. So this is a tune called Serious Times because we are in serious times. It was written in Pandemic. Uh, it's a collaboration between Infected Mushroom and Hope Six, which is another band that we work with a lot. So this is a good example of a tune that started by the singer of Hope Six sending us the vocals via GarageBand because this is how he records at home. And uh, we got it, and the vocals, uh, I'll let you hear them, and this is how world must find our way. it's basically yeah, started. Yeah, what? Let times, me open my folder of the vocals. Things will never because, be the same again. Okay, so I'll technically he sent us this vocal that Erez worked a lot to make it sounding like this. And then we add a lot of uh, kind of our unique uh, style into it, so... You hear now the vocals like that, but if you go to the whole thing, so it's technically you have a few manipulators, which is uh, one of our plugins with Polyverse and stuff, and a lot of uh, effects as well um, that makes the vocal uh, sound like this. So this is a good example to how we write a song with somebody. He sends us only the vocals and then we do the chords, melody or wherever we want to take the track. So in this case, I think uh, besides the groove, it starts with the lead as well, which is basically if I open another folder here, so many channels of leading and stuff. And then we have a basic melody and uh, yeah. the vocals. Yeah, and many times we change the melody of the singer with the very audio um, and we always say that we're gonna re-record it after because we are scared of artifacts or whatnot, but in the end most of the times it just, it's good, it's good enough and so we don't need to re-record. Uh, uh, we, you know, we very, very, being very careful with the S's, all the S um, sib syllables, um, uh, we don't tune them. But uh, Vary Audio does a very good job on uh, vocals and we can really change the song, you know, to... And what I like again about Vary Audio is and our extra pitching or extra, let's call it, uh, effects and plugins on the vocals, usually our tracks are so full that it's not a guitar and a vocal kind of that you hear so much stuff so we can get away with a lot of stuff that we do on the vocals if you hear the trick itself like when it's fully grooved there's a lot of going on so in this particular track the rhythm which is the drum section and bass was written after we had the vocals and the melody yeah. usually at least when we walk on a trance track or so, we start with the kick and bass line. So that will be the infected mushroom thing. We have a kick running and a bass. Now, of course, if I open every folder here, you have in the sub drum, you know, you have, again, I talked about a little bit of our OCD of colors. So here you go, the kick is always red. Snares will be stuff. These, we call it effects, will be orange. Uh, yellow will be all the Hyatt sections and then more sections and more. And when you open the bass as well, you have the low bass that Eris talked about. M I call it bass high. We have a mid bass. And of course, we keep also the MIDI stuff that if we want to go back and change something in the future that we will have also the MIDI file. That's a new thing for us. We, we used to not save it and, and that's... Uh, because it, it, we didn't have the render back then as well, you know, with, correct. The, with rendering it's so easy to save all the previous work and then you do disable to the previous track and then when we're done done with the track we we take all the disabled tracks and put them in a folder so 
Correct. It's, it's just very nice to, to be able to access quickly the stuff you need. Speaking of, you have the function of U, and uh, we have this U all in Y, I forgot to do that. This is an amazing function with U and Y is to hide or to show all the channels, all the channels that are being used at that specific moment. And this is so great when you have one or 200 like, channels. Yeah, like you just want to see what's happening You want to see what's happening only here. Uh, mm -hmm. That's one of, the, one of the great functions that we did. Yeah. And now we see only what is playing at the moment and not only the whole 250 channels, which helps us a lot. And... Um, not only that, the whole foldering system, and especially also, I gotta mention, the file, and then when you go to export and audio mix down, the whole option that you can have... Uh, you should drag it up to show it. Yeah, the whole options that you can basically have with the either do a stereo render, but then you can go channel to channel or groups or whatever you wanna export really helps today world with the stems because stems today became like a must with every track uh because the labels or or the scoring or if you want remixes everybody wants stems even and if you work in the same sequencer you need stems you need stems and uh, and and this is such a easy way to Great make stems, stems. Yeah. <laughs> like back in the day it was such a problem but this is so easy with the flow of work Honestly, we used to hire someone yes. that used to do our stems because it was so much time consuming. And, and, we, and we were lazy. That's the, for yeah, sure. That's another thing. That's yeah, for sure. but it was so, such time consuming to make stems. And We'd rather do music, not stems, you know? Yeah, So, but with this option, it became super, super easy. The stacking position is another thing that I want to talk about the, in Cubase. The, yeah, the, like the stack used to be how you record vocals, basically. To, to choose the right takes. To choose the right yeah. takes and everything. But me and Erez really implemented that into keyboard selection. We take a keyboard and we record one sound and then the same line record with 50 sounds, okay? Like 50 and, variation. And then with the stacking, yeah, and then we just choose from a little take and we make it one melody that sounds almost impossible to make because it was drafted from 50 sounds. So that's another... Uh, thing that we use in uh, Cubase. Another functionality that we mentioned is the macros, and that's a, this is a good example here. So if, if if you dive a little bit into the project and you see all this, you see a, a, a unique cut here that basically mutes only the snare, okay? And then the, the track, vocal, yeah. and, and the vocals, the vocals, and then the track of it. The way to do stuff like that is basically to go to each folder if you have folders, or if not, to each channel and just cut that part all over the track and leave the snare and the... Whatever I don't know, it is. Whatever it is. So, Erez did an amazing macro, and for that I'm going to go to this part, and let's say at this part I want only this or oh, this is the guitar so i want only the guitar to be all over the track so like don't, don't only the guitar to be soloed and to mute the rest of the track so like you want to now you so, have 100 tracks for example and and you you just want to do a drum feel that but mute the rest of the tracks it's very modern these days to do yeah and and, and uh, usually it takes a lot of time and a lot of work because you go you have to go to all over the track and cut it so Ares did the macro which is amazing i will just highlight it is command alt b over here and i i i took that part of guitar because i want only that guitar to stay here in the track and by command alt b it cuts the whole track whole channels besides this part and then when i take the loop off and i just hear it you go like and this is how it goes this used to take us more time more, yeah <laughs> And of course, with the command Z, I will take everything back. But that's a that's a macro that he built that really helps uh, in so much. Uh, uh, when we go down to the details and to make a track, I don't know if interesting. I won't call it interesting, but this is one of the tricks yeah, yeah. that we use as a macro. As I opposed would like, to, I would like to, sh we would like to share it with the community. If anybody is interested, we, we can share it with you guys this macro, so everybody can hopefully. Yeah, try it's it. such a great macro and such a useful tool. Uh, besides that, uh, I was mentioning, of course, here when we go to the vocals, 
and uh, well, these are already fixed vocals, but um, if uh, we want to go... Yeah, the one below, for example, yeah, never mind. Yeah, if we want to go to the Vari Audio and just, you know, edit Vari Audio, this is one of our favorite function in Cubase, of course. Uh, we used to do it back in the day in Melodyne, uh, which was very... It was great, but great. Took, took more time. Took more time. And now also you guys have the new, uh, what is it called? AN, what is it the format? Whatever it is that you have Melodyne in the lower zone. Yeah, so um, again... So that's amazing too. To make so much, if I just want to change one part of the melody of the singing, you know, I just take this, take it a little bit up, you know, and uh, I want it straight and one, uh, one button quantize, one button straight. It's, it's so easy to use such a functionality for vocals. I think for, for many, for the last two years, this has been our favorite part in Cubase, just playing with this, even yeah. not for fixing vocals, yeah, just to make- For scenes too. For scenes or for, to make the vocals crazy or to use it with so many second vocals that doesn't make any sense. I think this is such an interesting tool in Cubase. And again, I mentioned the pitch uh, the elastic pitch that can hear, especially can you can choose from so many variations, and I really like all these pitches. I also like the old school one, the standard and the yeah custom custom, and then you can and then you can really like sculpt the grains and the randomness of of, uh, of the stretches. Like in, like you have all the options of time stretching the world basically in Cubase in just flip of a menu item. It's incredible. Yeah, and, and again, the visibility, the functionality, of course, uh, on every channel, uh, especially when we talk about an infected mushroom process, when you go to a base, there's always an infected mushroom polyverse plugin in it. Yeah, so we're totally plugging right now. But, yeah, we're but, plugging but ourselves. It's honest. We but really it's honest. It. Like, for example, in this channel, which I just opened, there's gatekeeper at the moment, and it just here, this, at this particular part, it's used as a side chain, uh, not to sit on the kick or whatever. So again, easy to use. Usually when we open so many plugins here and now you have the functionality to do that. Back in the day it was less, but here you can do 60. We do it, we maximize it, and then a fast render and always the, the top channel will be disabled. Again, very uh, unique for Cubase and helps us and saves us a lot of time. Yeah, and we're still learning, you know? We you know there. what? I learn every day about the function in Cubase and I call Ares and he goes like, yeah, they have that. So I got to tell you, after so many years, because I don't read the tutorials. That's one of my problems. I don't. Like the manual. The manual, you know, and I don't see tutorials on the internet. So I, I find a lot of stuff here by mistake, even now, <laughs> you know, uh, which which I, I, I sometimes I get blown away. Uh, um, and um, yeah, so this is technically a, a typical infected mushroom spread and you will see it and every project that we will open it will look like that it looks simple that's the thing in the end it looks simple yeah look at it five beautiful channels yeah for key commands we went for so we, uh, we did k of course to open the key commands so we, have, we have more stuff like one click of a button it create eight kicks you know uh, oh, that's that's another good simple one click make eight kicks or uh and, and this is the break uh, I think you guys can take a screenshot and share it with people. Yeah, it's great. Delete all but not selected. <laughs> yeah, this is so useful, like for kicks, and then you can just do this different distances for hi-hats or whatever it is. So it's really, really time saving when you wanna, in EDM especially, you wanna duplicate stuff that needs to be duplicated. The basic stuff is uh, to know that the Cubis are the ones who invented VST in the first place and they're hosting the plugins, so I'm sure they know what's up, you know? They know how to make a good sounding stuff, they know how to make good sounding EQs even, and this is even the basic ba uh, building blocks. And, and, and then comes the 32-bit float, that I don't think that everyone was... Uh, a lot of people were stuck in a 24-bit for, for a long time, and you guys now have 64-bit float, and it's like little things like that that you guys are always like... are the inventors of this technology, so... I want to, I want, I want to be in, you know, in this ship. In my, in, I want to be with the ones who, you and, know, invent. And another main thing for me, I always found it really hard in other, well, at least in those that I went to, is me and Ares are both keyboard players. 
Um, you asked about producers. You don't have to be a producer to be a keyboard player. But if you are a keyboard player, I think Cubase was always very um, friendly to keyboard players. How writing the melody, you know, the the MIDI op the MIDI uh, the uh, window, and the easiness of writing a melody, which I found a bit harder on other DAWs. So for if you are a keyboard player, I think. Cubase was the f the first to be friendly to keyboard players, uh, and uh, and in that case, I would definitely choose Cubase on any other um, uh, DAW. Not to mention, he's speaking about that. So retroactive recording, it's like a genius function. Like you all, it always happened to us. I'm like, he, he screams at me, why didn't you record this? Like it was great. This was a better take. I'm like, now I have. <laughs> it's like it's great. It's but you can you can go back and like have happy accidents like not be like i don't know you can recover them that's amazing you know and, and honestly go back in time for that moment it's just so such a great genius idea and you know today a lot of fans approach us and ask uh which dough should i walk with you know this is a this is a question we get all the time now i always tell them the real answer is that it doesn't matter but if you're asking me you should work with Cubase because I find it the easiest to do music with because A, I've been following it for years and B, I didn't move to any other ones not because I think uh, they're not good they're just for me are not good as Cubase and, 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 and we like you they, they all have less functions as far as Correct. we as far as we, we, we study less functions and, and sometimes they have the same functions but really harder to make you know I find in other DAWs, it's harder to make stuff that I do here easily. Uh, you can do it in other DAWs, but for, for it's, it's harder to make, so... It's long, more time consuming. Correct, and, and, and I want it to be less time consuming. So that's why I always, we always choose Cubase. And believe me, we, we checked a lot of other DAWs. Uh, yeah. uh, just as again, for us, it's another always another plugin. Sometimes the synths are good over there. Sometimes, but as a DAW, as a, as a, as a, and you asked us before, what does the DAW mean in the creativity part? For me, it's, it's the creativity part. It's, it's the place yeah. to be in. So that's why Cubase for us, it's. Uh, it also helps us finish songs, to be honest. Like the, always the last 10% of finishing a product, it's always the most difficult for people, for us, for everyone. And honestly, Cubis just makes it like, okay, you did the hard work once, now you can save this process and do it whatever you want again. It's like everything is so modular. And I love modular stuff. Modular world and Cubase is simple and complex if you want it to be. It's just infinity, infinite uh, possibilities.